What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Nerd Rage Top 5. And today I am joined by your friends, Chris Pinkerton. And if you're nasty... What's up, party people? And Joe, a.k.a. Uncle Dolphin. Yo, what? Uh, and today we are going to do something that I know is near and dear to all of your hearts. And if it isn't, then it should be because it might help you get out of that basement. But the topic today is Top 5 Chick Flicks. And Joe and I have been talking actually a fair bit about uh, what constitutes a chick flick. And I think we're going to lead off Nerd Rage... Yeah. Yeah. with that so if you're interested in these conversations please check out nerd rage radio the podcast where you can find us on a weekly basis where we'll be having a, a conversation regarding this sort of topic very soon uh but with that we can go ahead and get started i believe and i have to clarify i haven't seen any of these movies in years right yeah, right, right that's okay same. i i just i went through some lists and found the ones that i personally knew and had seen multiple times over sure the and i'll start out with mean girls <laughs> oh. <laughs> but it's funny it's it good is, it yes. is uh tina fey who I'm a big fan of from Saturday Night Live. She actually wrote that movie. She stars in the movie. It's got. I, I'm going to say it's peak Lindsay Lohan in that movie. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't yeah, think yeah. she ever did Lindsay anything Lohan. better than that. I think I like a Lindsay Lohan song. I, you'd have to tell I, me what yeah, one I have is. No idea what. Maybe, maybe, maybe Lohan is, there a, is. is there a Lindsay Lohan song called "Rumors"? Uh, Bobby, you're going to look that one up, buddy. All right, you, I don't know you, about that you, one. You keep going. Deep cut. So yeah, um, but it's, it's got some really clever writing in it. Uh, the whole thing where he's she's giving the girl what she thinks are like diet bars and they're uh, some sort of like food they give to undernourished children. Yes. And, she ends up gaining bigger, all this bigger. weight, and she's picking out on the. Yeah, it's some just some clever stuff. I mean, it's it's a pretty old trope, you know, the ugly duckling kind of trope. Right, right, right. Becomes um, the beautiful swan exactly, in many ways. When she exactly. sees, when she recognizes her own inner beauty, though, not necessarily just the aesthetics they paint her in. Christopher, that's it, Bobby. Mm-hmm. That's, 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 that's it. She's all that. So that yeah. would be. And for the record, Lindsay Lohan does have a song called "Rumors," and I'm quite fond of it. I recommend everybody give it a shot. It's quite good. It takes all kinds. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is one, but yeah, there's something about Mary. So I'm going to say no. Okay. I'm going to say, say no. So, uh, okay. I don't know if a chick flick can be crude. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't I know. can imagine there's other things on this list that are kind of crude. And that might have changed recently. Like the movie Bridesmaids. I don't know if anybody has that on our list. Yeah, that's that's a, it's not a, on mine, but it's, I, a, it's a pretty crude movie. Yeah, that's but fair. Um, chick flick, right? I, but, I think that we're okay with that. And, and you know, the rom-com chick flick, is that interesting? Interchangeable. Crossover. You know, we had some I mean, conversations. It's a about, but I think yeah. at the end, there, if there's a love story that ends in a positive yes. manner, yes. it's kind of like a, a lifetime That's why I'm movie. For it. Yeah, there's. I, so I I disagree that it's a chick flick. However, I do love that movie, and I, I do think that that movie doesn't get the credit it deserves for yep. sort of changing how comedies were done. I feel like before there's something about Mary for a comedy to really make an impact, it had to be like Jim Carrey, you know, being a wild, just some goofy yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. And and that elevated it to to something else without there's something about mary you don't get knocked up you don't get 40 year old virgin you don't get yes, a lot of that kind that, of stuff yeah. that sort of you know came from i think in my opinion my number five is the devil wears prada like i think it's a good story they're they're good characters they're great it's great acting it's shot well it's written well and there's some stuff in there about like kind of the fashion world to me that's like it's fascinating you are interested in fashion i i, I am but like at, at one point they sort of make this 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 point that like look you know this designer creates this thing this thing becomes the trend the trend becomes knocked off the knockoff becomes copied the copy becomes imitated and before you know it the shirt that was eighty dollars at Nordstrom is now five dollars at Old Navy in my mind when I saw that I was like wow so like fashion designers often are the ones creating what everybody wears at the end of the day and that's what I took years ahead. Ahead. Yeah. yeah number four Christopher uh, listen Bobby there's no reason to break our streak here. <laughs> But my number four is The Devil Wears Prada. No way! I don't believe it! That's that's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I would have never guessed that in a million years. I thought I was going to be on my own. Pretty widely known. It's a it's a loosely based on the life of Anna Anna Wintour, who was she's she's the publisher of Vogue, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and apparently the you know the devil in that is is based on her. Anne Hathaway, I think, gives a great performance in that. Yeah, Um, it's just kind of a guilty pleasure movie for me. It's good, man. I didn't draw any parallels to any fashion industry anything in it <laughs> yeah it's like it's a good movie good characters good story like it's you know it's just it's just that the the genre like the the wheelhouse that it in is just isn't something that men are usually yeah. you know stereotypically interested in but it's independent of that it's good right it's like dark night for women <laughs> do you know what i mean wow. oh, oh, we have to bring batman into wow. this. let me let me break it down like, I know, this. let me break it down i know a lot of women like wives of friends of mine and so forth that have no interest in any of this stuff right uh, right, right 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 but they love the Dark Knight because even though they don't want to see any other superhero movie in their life, 
life. It's a good movie with good characters and a good story, and it's like that yeah, that rises and above and the subgenre. Yes, you know that's fair. Yeah, because I'm a child of the '90s. It's Sleepless in Seattle, and you've got mail. Okay, it's the same people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically yeah. the same story. One is just because it's such a time capsule of the world. It, it's it's yes, a the post internet, internet pre cell phone. You know, kind of for most early era. internet even. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah not like, everyone was yeah. like literally the. I mean, that's the premise of the of the thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, email the, being the, a new thing, the, the AOL and, thing, and it was also like a, a the, the cultural phenomenon, right? Like everybody knew you got mail, yes. like you know, it, like and it tapped right into that. You know, uh, can I confess? Mm-hmm. I've never seen Sleepless in Seattle. It's, I mean, it's, I mean, I, I know it's, I, it's, it's 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 a classic, but I've never seen, I've seen you've got mail, mm-hmm. but I've never seen, seen the Seattle. Always say is a better one. I th- I think I don't. I don't yeah, know. Uh, it's been years since I saw either one, but I, that, yeah, and I mean, Tom Hanks is. You know, and both Meg of Ryan. Meg Ryan, they're both they're amazing. Meg Ryan back when Seattle. she looked like Meg Ryan. Yeah. yeah, when she didn't look like a monster. Oh, gosh. And somebody lets you, out every three years. At, you live long uh, enough, you become the monster, right? <laughs> Dark Knight. They put, yes. do they... <laughs> My number four, uh, I'm thinking anyway, is going to be a, a, another unique choice, is Stepmom. I don't know if you guys noticed, around the time that came out, like covers for movies or, or posters for movies started to get this really like glossed over, yes. like too much Photoshop. So I'll tell you why. It's because... Uh, I'm actually I'm, I'm quite fond of it. My wife likes it a good bit too and watches it somewhat regularly. Uh, but I struggle with watching it because it does stir up some things in me. Mm-hmm. But like as just a person that has had half brothers, half sisters, step brothers, step sisters, stepfathers, stepmothers, like the whole gamut, like. Man, you got a whole flight of steps. Yeah, you got every, yeah like you I got to fucking. You're going to be winded when you get done with those, Bobby. <laughs> yeah. You know, but as so, as someone that like is, that's how I view my sort of family experience. Um, there's a lot experience. of things that that film speaks to that speak to me yeah. uh, on an on a emotional level, which is the, probably the goal, Christopher. Very, there you go. But they're very emotionally in tune. Chicks, that is. Sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> uh, number three, uh, it's one that uh, Joe actually mentioned earlier. It's she's all that. Yeah, uh, Freddie yeah. Prince Jr. Oh man, that is a uh, that is definitely a portrait of the '90s in that that movie. And it's once again the ugly duckling story. Maybe I'm a sucker for that. I, I just I remember there's just several silly scenes like the girl's dad. He's watching Jeopardy, but like passively, but he always guesses the answer and he's never right. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, just yeah. a funny bit that I remember. But oh, Paul Walker's in that. Rest in peace. Uh, you know, he, oh, he, but before he got into lore heavy with the <laughs> maybe that's a prequel and i don't know it could be now if you can connect Ooh, that somebody, in a, in a somebody. meaningful way i'll give you the lure <sighs> nod well joseph uh classic pretty woman yeah that's yeah a I, yeah that's I, a classic i actually like the movie a whole lot didn't remember when i went into that uh that louis vuitton store and they treated me like a jerk yes yeah. you know yes. and um and and, I, and somebody i work with was like oh dude you should have been like Big mistake, <laughs> huge, huge. But yeah, it's a classic, and like I, I, I think especially like you know my mother, like I think her generation specifically, yes, adore that movie. Like it means something far more to them than it does to any other generation of women, and I'm not sure why. I mean, it's the one that catapulted Julie Roberts, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It really did. It put her star on the map. So it's uh, probably because my mom was outside, dude. <laughs> I hate to hear it. <laughs> so my number three, this is probably the chick flick that I have re- truly loved the most. Uh, big fan of the soundtrack, Dirty Dancing. Okay. Oh, okay. Whoa, I didn't even okay. think about okay. that. That's a good one. That's, that's a really definitely it. Like yeah, the that's a good I one. I have watched that movie quite a bit. You yeah. Know, my, I, I did not see that until I was an adult. Really? Like, my parents would not let me watch it. Well, because there's the abortion yeah, scene. Yeah. 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 And it was, yeah, the folding table and a rusty knife. So it's funny. Is, that's uh, so important. Yeah. It is yeah. so important. I agree, but let me tell you something else from as an elementary school kid i had no f-ing idea what that scene was about mm. i just thought that she was sick and this dude helped her like i had no concept i'm like in third grade fourth yeah, grade right, like right. i don't even like i don't have no idea i don't even know how the baby got there in the first place the baby was not in the not, corner <laughs> no that's where you do not put it well they might have been the tr- Oh, uh, <laughs> it, depends on, where, it depends on where the bag was. Number two. Number two for me, and, and I know Bobby's going to say this isn't a chick flick, it's Forgetting Sarah Marshall. It's not a chick flick. I think it fits. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. It I'll definitely yeah. give it's it to amazing. you because I had it on my list too. Okay. But like, it's one of those. It's probably my favorite comedy movie of that team and crew and well, era. Well, so I, it's like a dude chick flick. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's a, it's a that, but that's the flick. genre that there's something about Mary I think created. The dude, the, the, the dude, the dude, the dude. Oh, I, I heard a term for this. It's <laughs> flick. <laughs> Hi, Patreon. I, I think that's uh, that's it, though. That is it. That is, that is it. That is, yeah. is that, that's it's a new name. Emotional now. for dudes. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I do love forgetting Sarah, I, and I love uh, Get Into the Greek. I love, I love. I've never watched the sequel, dude. I mean, it's a totally different type of movie, right? Right. But it's hysterical. It's like the same character guy. Yeah, but it's yeah. it's maybe spoofier. Like it's like goofier, but it is funny. It's got P Diddy in it. Yeah, or Puffy or two. Number two. Number two. Jeff. Number two. Fools Rush In. Oh, I don't know if I've ever seen one. that. Salma Hayek. Yes, but yeah, Fools uh, Rush In is uh, that is a good movie. They, they had like a random hookup at a club, got the girl pregnant, and then he falls in love with her basically. Right. And yeah. there's like her her it, family is. Is Hispanic yes. and he's white as a white well. dude. Oh, just and just conflict just there. too cultural. And then like the yeah conflicts ensues. They end up together. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And they wrote it's, it's really good. Like <laughs> I'm like don't, I don't first know. of all I'm a romantic. don't don't ever put your shoulders towards your chest again and say some chick flick is really yeah. good. Yeah, it's really good. My number two is Sex in the City. I think it's well done. I think it's a good story. I, I don't think they should have continued with those characters after that movie. Like I think the second movie was a mistake, and then this and then there, and that was just that or whatever that new show was. They should have just left that alone as well. Money, bro. But like the whole thing of like you follow these characters and they kind of all end up in like the places where they should be. They all kind of like... You know, you know. <laughs> They're all, they're all along with the tooth, Bobby. <laughs> oh, boy. It's just, a, it's just a good closing arc to that story. And I've, I've watched those characters through those seasons with my wife. Like, I was attached to those characters. And it, it just it finishes off that story and those characters in a very good and satisfying place. So, number one for numero me. Numero uno. This pam, is pam, pam, the movie's pam. from 1997. Okay. It's as good as it gets. I think it's more I think it's more I of a chick like, flick than Forgetting Sarah than Marshall. Than anything else on my list. Than no, forgetting, not, no, not more than Mean yes. Girls. Right, right, right. It's amazing. It's it is amazing. It's amazing. It is peak older Nicholson. Yeah, one of my um, favorite lines. There's in some it crude humor in that. Is sure. a, and I said it when I was going through the thing with Moss Toys. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, I love the way you take care of Spencer. <laughs> yeah, <It's> Spence. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what yeah. it is about that, but it cracks me up. Yeah, that's um, uh, he's great in that. He is great in that. He's so be crazy somewhere else. Oh man, dude! Also, when he says uh, they open up their luggage on the because you know his it, all his stuff was so tight and everything. Yeah, he's super OCD. Place, and uh, they open up their luggage and like he's looking at the the other person's luggage and he's like, "Nice packing." <laughs> <laughs> it's great. That's great. Go out of your way to see that one if yeah, you have. I don't know where it's I feel available. Like I want to see that one. It's such a popular movie. It's yeah. amazing. Numero uno. Number Joe. one. Another true um, chick flick. Serendipity. With, that is good. With Kate Beckinsale and John Cusack. That is good. I also love that movie. That is good. Uh, I started using the word serendipitous after same, I saw that movie. Same. I'm like, I know. I, really I know understand what, what that, that word is. means now. I live experiences a, that relate to yes. that, and now I'm going to introduce it into my vernacular. So my number one, and I'm not sure if it's a chick flick. Whatever as good as it gets is. Okay. I'm putting it in that same space. But I'm not sure it's not a chick flick. It's about a boy. That's Hugh Grant. Funny. And look, I know the objective is to do just that, Joseph. Don't get me wrong. But I find that dude incredibly charming. <laughs> like he like yes. I can watch him in just about anything. Like he cracks me up, even though he plays the same character every time. It, it's a character that I quite enjoy. So, uh, th like, anyway, I love it. I think it's funny. I think it's touching. Once again, it's about, like, childhood and family and whether your family's defined, you know, by blood or by, you know, relationships. That, that usually speaks to me. Tune in to Nerve Rage Radio episode 389 where we are going to open it with a discussion regarding what is a chick flick, what is a romantic comedy, what is a drama, etc., etc. And if you like more conversations like these, please just subscribe to Nerve Rage. It's available wherever your shows are that you listen to podcasts on and it's a good time with that being said let me tell you where you can find these gentlemen christopher why don't you tell them all oh, right here um <laughs> crash box customs all across the fruited plain i guess i should actually turn it this way oh so no that's the way the logo is <laughs> oh, no. um, i'm really gonna make bobby do some and i know i'm gonna close it <laughs> and i'm gonna clap my hands and it disappears oh my god i'm gonna make bobby go on youtube and watch some tutorials i hate all of my co-hosts on every show that i'm on i just want to go <laughs> and that, say that I mean, no, it's it. still just a sad dolphin hit because i understand <laughs> <laughs> but you can find me on Twitch at Terrible underscore Hime or Cyphus54. There you go. Leave your choices in the comments. Let me tell you what I don't want to hear in the comments. Oh, here we go. I don't know any chick flicks because my wife doesn't like that sort of stuff. She only watches Blade Runner and Transformers 3. You know, I don't believe you. Funny for one. story. My wife prefers an action movie to a rom-com. And I, and, I, and I don't. and I don't, But she still watches but them. But she still watches exactly. them. Exactly. Yes. But with that being said, Flappy Lip. Tasty traps. I thought mine was the traps. Oh, tasty toenails. <laughs> Tight traps player. Is that? I'm sorry. I didn't <laughs>